Chapter 12 Renee I can't believe what a day it's been, Renee said as Garrett pulled into her apartment complex. Yeah, it's definitely one for the books, he said, putting the truck in park and turning off the engine. Look, I know it's been weird, and I've been a little hot and cold, but I want to explain why. I told you I left Chicago because life got messy. One of the things I didn't tell you is that part of that mess was a woman, a nurse I worked with. The relationship didn't end well, and it made the job miserable after that. I'm so sorry, Renee said. I understand. When I worked in Texas, I was young and not a believer. I met a doctor who promised me the world. He was going to propose and we were going to open a clinic together. She looked down at her empty left hand. Then I caught him dating the barista at the coffee shop by the hospital. I didn't handle it well, but I told myself I would never let that happen again. Later, I became a believer, and I sent him an apology. I couldn't believe how awful I'd acted. Garrett smiled softly at her. I really like you, Renee. I can't guarantee that if we dated, it would end in marriage. But I do believe, if it didn't, that we would both handle it better than our past experiences. I've been praying about it, and I would really like to give it a shot, if you would. I would love that. He grabbed her hand and his thumb rubbed the back of her hand. How about dinner tomorrow when we get off? Sounds good. I know of a great little restaurant if you like Italian. That sounds perfect. Can I walk you to your door? Renee nodded and he took her hand as they walked to the door. Oh, is there any way you can pick me up tomorrow for work? She asked as she pulled out her keys. My car will be ready, but I don't have a way to get there. No problem. I'd be happy to. Thank you. She unlocked the door, but didn't push it open. She didn't want this to end. I should probably go, he said, squeezing her hand. It's getting late, and I should put some ice on this nose. Yeah, you probably should. He held her gaze for a moment, and then he leaned in and brushed his lips softly across hers. Before she knew it, the kiss was over and he was stepping back. I'll see you in the morning, he said, and then he was gone. She stepped into her apartment and closed the door behind her. The kiss had been short, but she planned to replay it over and over in her head. A knock on the door interrupted her daydreaming, and she yanked it open, expecting to see Garrett on the other side. Her smile faltered as she saw Chris there instead. Chris, what are you doing here? I just saw you get out of that guy's truck, Renee, and I wanted to make sure everything was okay. He saw her get out of Garrett's truck? Had he been spying on her? And if so, how much had he seen? The kiss? She didn't know why, but the idea of Chris watching her first kiss with Garrett felt creepier than anything else he'd done. Everything is fine, Chris. That guy was just giving me a ride home. Chris glanced around and Renee could almost feel the anxiety rolling off him. It seemed to float around him like Pigpen's cloud of dirt did in those old Charlie Brown shows. How did he function with that much anxiety? Why was he giving you a ride home? Where is your car? My car is in the shop, Chris, but I'll be getting it tomorrow. This conversation was completely creeping her out, but she couldn't afford to break the lease to move early. However, she'd be asking Emma if she wanted to move, and if she didn't, Renee would find a place of her own as soon as she could. You really shouldn't be without a car, Renee. It's not safe. What was not safe was this conversation. Renee had always thought Chris was harmless, but now she wasn't so sure. And you shouldn't be taking rides from strangers. That's dangerous. 
He's not a stranger, Chris. We work together. She probably shouldn't have said that. Chris had never shown up at the hospital that she knew of, but he seemed really annoyed tonight. What if he tried to do something to Garrett? She wasn't sure exactly what he could do because Garrett had a few inches and about 50 pounds of muscle on Chris. But Chris seemed unstable, and unstable could be unpredictable. He shook his head. Still, you don't know him. Renee knew Garrett a lot better than she knew Chris, but there was no point in arguing with him. She had a feeling that he was about to suggest he drive her around, and the thought of getting in a car with him was more than she could handle. Well, it won't matter because I'm sure I'll have my car back tomorrow, but I appreciate the concern. However, it's been a long day and I'm tired, so I'm going to turn in. Before he could say anything else, she stepped back and shut the door. Then she locked it and stared at it as if she expected him to be able to open it. Shutting the door in his face was probably rude, but she was less concerned with hurting his feelings as she was with being safe. Lord, please let Chris be harmless.